Happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back here for part two of the Trojan Horse Revealed. Let's, uh, hmm. There we go. I'm just figuring out OBS Studio again. All right, we've got some documents here that were filed on January 22nd in the Eastern District of Tennessee Court Systems. Made it through PACER, uh, and I've got a, a copy here. Uh, my last video, I vectored you to where a video that BZ read through it, and I'm just going to read through it just for myself. So that's what this video is about. All right, let's head on over. I want to make sure my purple pointer is working. Looks like it is. Okay, original instrument, do notice. Notice to principal is notice to agent, and notice to agent is notice to principal. What this is saying is that uh, this notice here, as long as they give it to the principal, the, the, the primary uh, the primary forces, the primary people behind uh, this action here versus their agents, this is saying it doesn't matter who you give it to on their team, that once one person is notified, you all are notified. So this is the United States District Court, Eastern District of Tennessee at Knoxville. The plaintiff is United States of America in all capital letters, signifying the corporation, versus Randall Keith Bean in all caps and Heather Antucci Giraffe in all caps. Case number 3-17-CR-82, Varlin Shirley, and this is the... Uh, USDJ, USMJ, I believe that's the United States Department of Justice and the United States, hmm, I don't know, is that military justice? I don't know what USMJ stands for, but I will look that up after this video. Uh, we've got the rest of the case numbers here. We're also bringing in the, uh, the identity hearing case numbers from DAR, or that's Deborah... Robinson's uh, docket. <clears throat> Precipe, declaration of due cause and judgment and order of dismissal. This is two, a lot of people here. Deborah C. Poplin and Deborah C. Poplin, all caps, the alleged United States, specifically and particularly clerk of courts for Eastern District of Tennessee. Deborah C. Poplin, and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto, hereafter are just alleged clerk of court. So this term, alleged clerk of court, is being used as a container for anyone, principal or agent, to the clerk of courts. With the reported address... Howard H. Baker, Jr., H.S., Courthouse, 800 Market Street, Suite 130, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37902, and phone number 865-545-4228. To Thomas A. Varlin and the all-caps version, the alleged United States, specifically and particularly District Judge or Chief, for the Eastern District of Tennessee, and to all alleged principles thereof and alleged agents thereto hereafter, alleged district judge. So another term here that is a container for everyone that's associated, uh, principal or agent-wise, with Thomas Varlin, with the same address. He's got a different phone number, though, uh, ending in 4762. We got C. Clifford Shirley Jr. and his all caps corporation counterpart. Um, 
specifically and particularly the magistrate judge or chief for the Eastern District of Tennessee. C. Clifford Shirley and all principles thereof and alleged agents thereto hereafter called the alleged magistrate judge. So we've got another container term here that is collecting everybody who is associated with C. Clifford Shirley Jr. with the same address, his phone number ends in 4260. James Douglas Overby and his all caps counterpart, replacement of Nancy Stollard Har, who was the old uh, U.S. attorney, with reported address 800 Market Street, or, yeah, 800 Market Street, Suite 211, Knoxville, Tennessee. Her phone number ending in 4167, alleged United States, specifically Department of Justice, uh, the Knoxville U.S. Attorney's Office and particularly alleged United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee, and to all alleged principles thereof and thereto hereafter, the alleged United States Attorney, another container term, inclusive of specifically naming Cynthia F. Davidson and her all caps counterpart, Assistant United States Attorney, and also Anne Marie Sfalto and her all caps counterpart, the assistant United States attorney. This is also to Randall Keith Bean and his all caps counterpart, Idem Sonans. And that means anything that kind of sounds like Randall Keith Bean or spelled similarly to Randall Keith Bean, the alleged defendant. So we've got a whole bunch of presepes here. Remember, a presepe is an order. It's not a motion. It's not a suggestion. It's an order. So presepe one for due cause declared below restated this presepe declaration of due cause and judgment of dismissal is duly entered and recorded into the record with and by due authority, authorization, legal standing, lawful standing with full due responsibility, accountability, liability, and endorsement, signature and seal of Heather Antucci Giraffe and Heather Antucci Giraffe. So we have the mixed case and the all caps. And this was pretty much written in all caps here with some bold. And that's the way all of these are written. Precipe 2. Do notice. Each act done by foreign agents registered and not registered are a matter of public record and have been and continue to be duly accepted as evidence of separate acts of gross negligence, collusion, corruption, subversion, and more. Furthermore, said acts have been and continue to be duly assessed, reconciled, and settled against the foreign actors and interests that have knowingly caused said gross negligence, collusion, corruption, subversion, and more by their foreign agents situated in offices and employment through in the branches, departments, and agencies of the, quote, United States of America, end quote. Set assessments, reconciliations, and settlements done under existing commercial and true bill accounts by original, accordingly, since October 18, 2017, 901 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, documents 43, 54, 55, and 56, all restated and duly incorporated here by reference, as if set forth in full. Precipe number three. Precipe number two is restated here, and with due further notice of enforcement of said done by and under Due Executive Order, Document 71, Declaration of Due Notice and Service of Executive Order 13818, duly authorized, verified, and validated, restated, and duly incorporated here by reference as if set forth in full. So we're getting into talking about the executive orders. <clears throat> BZ and Sheila Corona have talked an awful lot about that. 
and it was the executive order and, or an invitation from Sheila to me to talk about the executive order here uh, that really got me connected in and talking. And we still haven't talked about the executive order yet. Our conversation keeps uh, bursting forth and spilling out uh, through every seam, and uh, it's been pretty magical. So price to pay number four. Well, we're just going to restate price to pay is one, two, and three again. And for due cause declared below, restated documents X, XXX, XXX, XXX are null and void ab initio and praetera praetera. So price of pay number five is price of pay four restated. And remember, price of pay four was price of pays one through three restated. So just really in this, just in the first page of price of pays, there's a lot of repeating. It's in all caps. It is, this is the written legal form of shouting at the top of your lungs into the face of somebody who is lying to themselves about what their senses are telling them. It doesn't get any clearer than this. So price to pay for restated and for due cause declared below restated and in bold, judgment of dismissal with prejudice is duly made, issued, entered, recorded, noticed, and effective immediately in the above referenced alleged case and all case references associated thereto, nunc pro tunc and praetera praetera. Declaration of due cause with full due responsibility, accountability, and liability to declare true, accurate, and complete. I do duly declare the following that I am conscious and competent to make said declaration now duly made, issued, and entered by Presepe into the record of the above referenced alleged action restated for all to rely upon. <clears throat> Roman numeral I, or one. Declaration of Summary of Facts. A. Long prior to July 30th, 1972, there has been a universal balancing and termination of heinous crimes perpetrated, including those committed against humanity and this planet. Quote, universal cleanup, end quote. I am one of all participating in that universal cleanup and have done so transparently for the last 20 years. My areas of expertise are universal commerce, strategies and tactics, iTech or information technology, I'm guessing, with banking, trade, finance, accounting, law, and corruption. Everything is known and recorded. Every, quote, where, end quote. Every, quote, when, end quote. So everything is known and recorded everywhere, every when, and of everything for use in the universal cleanup. Furthermore, all planetary systems, databases, and more were created within the universal database. Quote, universal backdoor, end quote. That is, I guess, the term for the universal database is the universal backdoor. With the full knowledge and consent of the managing foreign actors that were responsible for implementing them planetary-wide at a time when they believed there was never any risk of the universal backdoor being used to release every bit of data held within it. Letter B. Recorded universal meetings have been held in and near Antarctica. Quote, Antarctica, end quote. 
as well as other locations for the last six years during said universal cleanup. I have been present at those meetings. This is Heather saying that she has been present at those meetings. During those meetings, specific and particular foreign actors on this planet, and then italicized in bold and underlined, that include but are not limited to the public frontmen, frontmen, that word in quotes, of Rothschild, Putin, Berlusconi, Ma, Z, is that how you say that? Gates, Sr., Bush, Clinton, Cheney, Soros, and the royal families in Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Great Britain, Italy, China, Russia, Japan, etc. Foreign actors, in quotes. So, quote, foreign actors, end quote, is the term used for identifying all of these people associated with those powerful families have attempted to negotiate their continued long-standing management programs and heinous crimes against humanity and this planet. The primary universal financial facilitators of the remaining said foreign actors and their foreign agents include, but are not limited to, 1. Carl Langenstein, and in parentheses, ch slash pa, semicolon 2, or sorry, ch slash pa, semicolon, and then number 2, Henry Todd. So, I, so it looks like Carl Langenstein, ch might be China, I'm not sure what pa is yet, but Henry Todd, looks like Henry Todd might be in the UK, I'm not sure what np is. Number three, Jonathan D. Betts, U.S. Four, Janet Yellen, FSB, U.S. Stanley Fisher, FSB, U.S. and ZM. And William C. Dudley, FSB, NY in the U.S. All identities of every foreign actor, facilitator, and foreign agent, and all data held with the universal backdoor are to be made public on the pre-chosen and preset date of January 22nd, 2018 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. So that was about 15 hours ago. Right now, for me, it is five minutes past noon Pacific time. All right. I, I mean, that, that number or that letter B paragraph there, that, that's pretty amazing. These, uh, these six names here. Uh, well, I just love the, the family to, to plug them in and, and, Vector information. Who are these people and what do they have to do with all of this? All right, letter C. At these same universal meetings, especially just prior to, during, and after the 2016 elections, these same foreign actors repeatedly expressed their concern for their long-standing status and control of, quote, their, end quote, private interest, assets, and planetary management that are near non-existent due to the universal cleanup. They expressed further specific concern regarding any universal support, coordination, and cooperation being given to Donald J. Trump now duly elected President of the United States, or POTUS, in his efforts to clean up United States and to protect and empower the people in America, their interests and their lives. Letter D. Prior to June 22, 2017, I, 
was duly noticed and made aware of escalating unlawful and illegal threats of foreign action by known foreign actors against POTUS that included, but is not limited to, data that these known foreign actors intended to remove POTUS from office by any means necessary if their current means failed. Russia had their plan, China had their plan, while Switzerland, UK, which includes Commonwealths of Canada and Australia as well, and the European Union were playing supporting roles and letting things play out by China and Russia. I knew the foreign threat to be credible and viable and continued to monitor the foreign actor's current means for escalation to, quote, any means necessary. <clears throat> so, so we got the word I in here a few times. This is Heather, who is the author of this. So Heather was duly noticed and made aware. And Heather knew the foreign threat to be credible and viable. Letter E. I was also, so Heather was also aware of the possibility that foreign actors threat against POTUS had the potential to become, quote, imminent slash instant, end quote based on many years of experience, knowledge, <clears throat> and familiarity with the foreign actors. Their financial facilitators and their global foreign agent network, weaponry, operations, patterns, and funding, including, but not limited to, operations, funding, and foreign agents and offices, and employment within all the entities, branches, departments, agencies, states, and districts of the United States of America. And again, applying the label of foreign agents to that whole group. The situation was closely being monitored for the possibility that the foreign threat would escalate to imminent slash instant. On June 22nd, 2017, I did receive data that said known foreign actors were becoming even more agitated, frustrated, and completely angered by their lack of being able to fund operations. Their foreign agent's inability to read, predict, and control POTUS and his actions, and their suspicion that POTUS was receiving universal support. My years of experience with the foreign actors coupled with the data and the foreign actors escalating patterns of rhetoric, funding consolidation, and actions confirmed to me that their threat against POTUS would 100% escalate to imminent slash instant. I reviewed and considered all available data, options, and sources to use to permanently terminate the foreign threat against POTUS. On June 27, 2017, Universal actions were initiated to provide transparent cooperation, coordination, sources, resources, and the vast intelligence of the foreign actors involved to better empower those in the U.S. military and law enforcement who would protect POTUS and for POTUS to have all, the, all tools available in existence to permanently terminate the foreign actors' threat against him. So that collectively is being termed universal unification. <clears throat> so I'm going to read to you what universal unification is again. On June 27, 2017, universal actions were initiated to provide transparent cooperation, coordination, sources, resources, and the vast intelligence of foreign actors involved to better empower those in the U.S. military and law enforcement who would protect POTUS and for POTUS to have all the tools available in existence to permanently terminate the foreign actor's threat against him. All of that collectively is universal unification. Said foreign threat is the same long-standing foreign threat against all of humanity, this planet, and in my humbled experience, all of existence. I left my home in Lynn, Massachusetts to protect my family and to prepare to provide assistance as necessary. Wow. Wow. 
Letter H. On or about July 3rd, 2017, I arrived in Houston, Texas. After my arrival, I received notice of the details of a strategic operation by foreign actors to steal money from the U.S. Treasury Direct Depository accounts, commonly referred to now as TDAs, using the people in America. So, <clears throat> uh, steal money from the U.S. Treasury Direct accounts using the people in America. The strategic operation was to be run with a, quote, sovereign, end quote, template to remove anyone that may risk the operation getting out of the foreign assets or foreign agents control, like Occupy Wall Street did. The basic operation was for an, quote, average citizen, end quote, to receive enough information of how to access their Treasury Direct Depository accounts, make payments from said accounts to various <clears throat> members immunized by Obama's National Cybersecurity Act, corporations, banks, etc., and other various acts. The receiving entities would then be ordered by the Federal Reserve to return the funds. The receiving entities would be able to make write-offs, insurance claims, etc., while the Federal Reserve, with the aid of Bank for International Settlements, would divert the seemingly returned funds to the designated global locations in support of the foreign threat against POTUS and other terrorist activities since all their systems are legally private, except in one instance, the universal back door, which is the database. <clears throat> Letter I. From that day forward, universal actions were planned and done to, one, redirect the majority of the foreign actors' attention from making their threat against POTUS imminent, two, to create an attractive bait that would provoke those foreign actors from using and harming unsuspecting average citizens, quote-unquote average citizens. Three, to create one single recorded and unexpected event that would cause and render the foreign actors into a desperate state where they would abandon their typically compartmentalized protocols and procedures used to remain hidden and unknown for a clear, concise, transparent, and complete global footprint, quote, global footprint, end quote, including but not limited to exposing their identities, their funding and transactions, operations, and most importantly, their foreign agents within all entities, branches, departments, agencies, states, and districts of the United States, and the members and systems of the Federal Reserve System and Bank for International Settlements, and four, simultaneous completion of the universal unification to support and further empower POTUS, U.S. military, law enforcement, and the people in America to permanently terminate the foreign threat to POTUS, the longstanding threat to people in America, humanity, and this planet, and the possibility of future threats being created hereafter. Wow. J. On or about July 10, 2017, I was made aware that the foreign actors threatening POTUS had realized they were losing control of their strategic operation and directed their foreign agents to ascertain the, quote, bait, end quote, that was in the form of an, quote, officially, end quote, retired military man, Randall Keith Bean and Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe, whom the foreign actors are familiar with from the universal cleanup op operations. The foreign actors did abandon typical protocols and procedures and did directly order foreign agents to quickly organize unlawful and illegal actions in order to not lose further control of their own strategic operation initiated July 1, 2017, its exposure, and to grab the, quote, bait, end quote, so that their foreign agents in Tennessee would have and manage 
jurisdiction and control over the matter thereafter. K. On July 11, 2017, at approximately 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, said foreign actors and foreign agents did take unlawful and illegal actions, including, but not limited to, kidnapping, assaulting, and detaining Randall Keith Bean, as well as unlawfully and illegally stealing his lawful and legal property in or around Knoxville, Tennessee. This was done while the complete due legal documentation of lawful and legal sale, title, ownership, origin of funds, history of funds, and authority involved was being delivered directly to Whitney Bank and Buddy Greg Motors. Letter L. Approximately late afternoon on that same day, the foreign actors threatening POTUS did contact me directly to be able to assess what effect and progress the morning's events with Mr. Bean had on stopping the universal unification, the completion of their threat against POTUS, and my personal actions to stop that threat. They delivered a threat to take unpres excuse me, unprecedented, harmful, painful, and immediate action against me personally if I continued to take actions to complete the universal unification and to permanently terminate their threat against POTUS. They also delivered an offer for me to be able to use my personal treasury direct deposit account along with a small group I designated and controlled and not take such, unpre and not take such unprecedented action against me along with an offer of money if I agreed and took action to shut down all universal actions to make the public aware of the foreign actor's strategic operation and not make public information regarding their other global funding operations. Wow. I mean, we've got, we've got the, uh, the carrot and the stick right here. Reward and punishment. Letter M. Over the last 20 years, I have received many, many offers and threats from these foreign actors in their hopes to stop universal cleanup. I informed them that I would consider all that they had said. Immediately thereafter, I continued to deliver the due documentation to all necessary parties in order to protect the ones that the foreign actors had made participants to their unlawful and illegal operation, including, but not limited to, protecting Randall Keith Bean, Whitney Bank, and Buddy Greg Motorhomes. Letter N. I gave my current findings and suggestions to all participants of the universal cleanup. The foreign actors threatening POTUS had effectively created the, quote, unexpected event, end quote, described an article I.I.3 dot I dot above, restated by their own hand and actions with a preset data release of all data recorded during the universal cleanup, which is January 22, 2017 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, which was about 15 hours ago. I further declared, noticed, and confirmed my intent to enter the unexpected event that actions had already been taken on July 10, 2017, with supplement, supplemental recording to ensure my entrance into the unexpected event and my continued fortitude to personally contribute to the permanent termination of the foreign threat against POTUS. Letter L. On July 12, 2017, the foreign actors threatening POTUS were duly notified of my rejection of their offer by my specific, particular, and transparent actions done that day with supplemental recording to notify the public of the foreign actors' operations. The July 11, 2017 illegal and unlawful actions against Randall Keith Bean and universal actions to make sure that, quote, or excuse me, to make sure that no, quote, average citizens, end quote, would be further used and harmed. 
On or about July 14, 2017, the foreign actors did begin to take considerable actions to better cons consolidate, fortify, and move, quote, their, end quote, global assets, properties, operations, and foreign agents against risk of exposure and loss. Letter N. On July 18, 2017, the foreign actors threatening POTUS were given universal notice and examples of universal unification, with further notice that they would be transparently given to further empower the U.S. military, law enforcement, POTUS, the people in America, humanity, and this planet in order to permanently stop all existing threats. Letter O. On July 19, 2017, I was informed upon my arrival at Washington, D.C. that the foreign actors threatening POTUS did respond to said universal notification by quietly ordering their foreign agents to prepare further specific and particular action to prevent me from catching a flight out of Knoxville, Tennessee to Washington, D.C., and to prevent the universal unification from being made public. I obviously arrived safely in Washington, D.C. Letter P. On July 20, 2017, the foreign actors did panic, again abandoning their typical protocols and procedures, and ordered their foreign agents, including Janet Yellen, chairwoman of the Federal Reserve System, so that's one of the names mentioned up uh, at the beginning of this document, to take drastic measures, including but not limited to making a false off-record report of threat when I neared the U.S. Treasury and the White House, causing the U.S. Secret Service, U.S. military, and law enforcement to immediately respond and secure the entire street. Eventually, no threat was found to be present by said response teams. During that event, I did receive a call from the foreign actors threatening POTUS, making comments including, but not limited to, quote, you won, end quote. Simultaneous universal reports were coming in that foreign actors were considering and consulting on the viability of making their threat against POTUS imminent slash instant. Universal teams monitored all data every moment for any confirmations that the threat against POTUS had indeed escalated to imminent slash instant. The foreign actor's plan of threat and the identification of the foreign agents that they were immobilizing to implement it. Universal counteractions were on ready to immediately neutralize the foreign actors, their foreign agents, and the foreign threat against POTUS even though the universal unification had not been completed at the time. Letter Q. On July 24, 2017, there was, a, there was universal intelligence to confirm that the foreign actors had chosen to make their threat against POTUS imminent slash instant, and that their foreign agents currently in offices and employment within the entities, branches, departments, agencies, states, and districts of the United States of America were to be used along with other foreign agents that were currently arriving in America. Based on that intelligence and my own observations, since arriving in Washington, D.C., I chose to hyper-accelerate the completion of the universal unification and de-escalate the imminent slash instant foreign threat against POTUS. I catalyzed all said notices, universal unification, tripped all planetary alarms, and a real-time status check of my NCIC by presenting myself at White House, insisting they run my passport, giving them one of the foreign actors' organizers to track my mobile phone number, and then and my then current lodging information at Trump International Hotel, Washington, D.C. The foreign actors were caught off guard by my actions that night. All universal reports and intelligence gathered confirmed that the foreign actors were irate at me and scared of imminent risk of their own exposure, capture, and more. 
especially in the light of the fact that POTUS, U.S. military and law enforcement, now had universal support, including but not limited to the universal backdoor of all records held within for the universal cleanup. Wow, this universal backdoor database, uh, that just blows my mind. Oh, wow. Letter R. On July 25, 2017, at approximately 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I was approached and taken at Trump International by foreign actors, foreign agents, and, quote, officially, end quote, entered into the, quote, unexpected event, end quote. Article II3 above restated on July 26, 2017. Since then, the foreign agents have made and continue to make transparent their global footprint. For POTUS, U.S. military and law enforcement, and the entirety of the universal unification to act upon in order to permanently terminate the foreign threat against POTUS and the people in America, humanity, and all of existence. I mean, the way this universal unification and the universal backdoor, uh, I mean, this this sounds like the, the big cleansing of of low vibrations and, and pulling darkness out by its roots and the universal back door is the the long standing permanent record that allows it all to unwind and to be separated. That is the image I have in my head of what's going on here. Oh wow. All right. <clears throat> Letter S. On July 25, 2017, I did commence actions to assist with universal cleanup. Now with universal unification with POTUS, U.S. military and law enforcement. My specialized focus was determined to identify national security threats inherent within the structure and operation of current judicial branch and law enforcement operations. I was assisted by individuals in the FBI, U.S. Marshals, Bureau of Prisons, and Judicial District of Tennessee. Letter T. Since July 25, 2017, record has been duly established and provided to POTUS, U.S. military and law enforcement of the national security threats within the structures and operations of all entities, branches, departments, agencies, states, and districts of the United States of America, and who created them, including but not limited to deceptive acts and practices against the people in America, ignorance, collusion, corruption, and subversion done specifically in the above referenced alleged action and the perpetrators have been duly referenced for appropriate action under Executive Order 13818. That's Trump's latest executive order, I believe. I can't remember what the number is, but I'm guessing that that's what that's referencing. The one, the one about human trafficking. Letter U, documents 18, 19, 25, 42, 43, 45, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 64, 65, 66, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 80, 81, 82, 86, 92, 93, 94, 95, and 96 are all restated and incorporated here by reference as of set forth in full, especially all precipes and declarations of due cause. Roman numeral two, findings, or excuse me, final due findings, judgments, and orders. For due cause, all documents and actions by alleged parties and entities, inclusive of those by Thomas Varlin and C. Clifford Shirley, or it says Clifford C. C. Shirley Jr., it's C. Clifford Shirley Jr., are all found to be null and void ab initio for lack of due jurisdiction and authority. 
Further, it is found, judged, and ordered with sole due lawful and legal authority, authorization, and jurisdiction, a matter of due record that this alleged case against Heather Antucci Giraffe is dismissed with prejudice for due cause, and said judgment and order is duly made, issued, entered, and noticed by Heather Antucci Giraffe for all to rely upon effective immediately. This precipe and declaration of due cause now duly made, issued, noticed, verified, and validated for all to rely upon. January 22, 2018. Heather Antucci Giraffe, her biometric fingerprint seal. Original instrument, <clears throat> due notice. The same information that was at the cover sheet here. This is the judgment and order of dismissal. It is ordered that the superseding criminal indictment and action against the above named defendant Heather Antucci Giraffe is dismissed with prejudice. Signed by Heather Antucci Giraffe, January 22nd, 2018. And Heather's certificate of service. I certify that on January 22nd, 2018, this original instrument, precipe, declaration of due cause, judgment, and order was duly made, issued, scanned, and caused to be delivered by operation of the alleged court's electronic filing system to all alleged parties indicted on the electronic or indicated on the electronic filing receipt. Alleged parties purportedly may access this filing through the alleged court's electronic filing system. The original Heather Antucci Giraffe. Well, all right, family. There you've got it. So there is a phone call that is posted on BZ's YouTube page. And it was from today, I think a, a lunchtime phone call. It started off with Sheila and um, BZ also spoke with Judy Jandora and Heather herself. So go take a look at that one. Have a listen. It's about 20 minutes long. Uh, I've been in contact with Sheila Corona today. Uh, just some short text messages and uh, we're working to uh, schedule something where we can link up together and record a chat and uh, get some more of this information out to you uh, in more of a conversational style. If you've got uh, anything for me, my email is lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. Uh, thank you. I, I've got so many emails, it's impossible for me to respond to all of them, um, as well as all the comments. Uh, you are just a high vibrational, loving bunch of uh, beings. And keep it up. All right. That's all for now. Bye-bye.